probably calling his mom saying, yes, I've won $200,000. So True Tyler with the perfect play, but then again, it was a very easy play. And now Chase Wynn is going to be very, very aggressive here. He, well, and by aggressive, I mean he's going to do a lot of limping. But, I mean, you don't have to limp only, right? You can have a raising range as well, so he decides to raise. He's definitely representing a strong range here, or a pretty strong range, because limping is so attractive. You know, if you're going to raise, you generally want to have a strong hand. And he's representing a strong hand, and this board just absolutely smashes his range, right? So he's probably going to raise kings and jacks and king jack and all that stuff. High equity draws, like queen 10. So a very good board for chase win. And he gets to be very aggressive, especially when Almaden's kind of short. If Almaden has a good hand, he's just going to fast play, right? If Almaden had a hand like pocket eights, he's just going to three bet and call it off. If Almaden had a hand like ace jack, he may just go, go all in preflop or three bet and call it off. You know, if he had a hand like king queen, he'd probably do that. Or a hand like king 10 suit it. So Almaden is Almaden is not very strong on this board now. So Chase went check saying, well, I've got a hand which is probably good enough to get the showdown, but I don't necessarily want to bet. The seven doesn't help Chase win too much. I mean, maybe he checked in like 10-9, maybe checked in like seven, so it improved to an open ender or a set. He could have had a hand like Jack seven, King seven. So he improved sometimes, but not a whole lot. So if he bets, he's saying, hey, I was probably good on the flop. I, I just wasn't sure. So Chase Wynn does bet here, and he bets small, saying, hey, I've got a thin value hand. Maybe a hand like pocket 10s and like a7, stuff like that. Maybe even a hand like, you know, queen 5 suited. And the 10 does improve some of Chase Wynn's air. So if he had 8-9, he now has almost the nuts, queen 9, ace queen. So he maybe even value bet ace queen uh, pretty thinly. So Chase, and he also has hands like Jack-10, King-10, so he gets to be quite aggressive on a card like this. And he bets around three quarters pot, so seems like a fine bet size. And quick call by Almaden. So Almaden could, probably has a hand like King-4 suited, he just checked back the flop because he's seen his opponent be quite aggressive, and he wants to, you know, call it off on the streets. And maybe he had a hand like, you know, 10-7 suited. Okay, so my, my read on Almaden was spot on. You know, he had some kind of weaker king. He's seen his opponent be aggressive, so he thought, oh, let me just check behind. Maybe he's aggressive on later streets. So, yeah, um, I like to play by Almaden. I think it's I think it's perfect. Um, you know, I would have made the same play, so obviously I, I like the play. Otherwise, I wouldn't have made it. And Chase Wynn has eight deuce off, which is definitely very loose, right? So he's probably thinking, well, I don't want to limp this hand. I'm just going to raise. Perhaps he thinks Almaden is too weak, he doesn't three bet him, he doesn't really call pre-flop, but a deuce is quite loose. And on the river, I mean, on this river, I think you absolutely have to bluff. If you got a deuce off in your range, you probably have a lot of bluffs in your range, so you have to be careful, but you have eight high and you block the straight, right? So the bluff on the river is is, is definitely mandatory. Not mandatory, but it's definitely a good, uh, good bet. But you have to be careful that you're not too, uh, too loose to begin with, right? If you have a lot of these eight high type hands, four high, whatever, three high then you can be very you can be very far out of the line. So <laughs> very aggressive play, but pretty cool one. So we're seeing a hand develop between Almaden and Victor. And these guys are quite deep. They're 200 big blinds deep. So Victor is going to continue with a lot more hands here. He's getting a decent price. He can play in position, you know, so he can raise flops. He can float a lot of flops. He can mess around. He can call check raises if he stabs and gets check raised. He just has a lot of playability. So I, w I wouldn't expect Victor to, uh, to fold. Also, apparently he called 7 deuce suited to a 4-bet uh, in, the, in the, one of these games and won a 500k pot. So if he's calling 7 deuce, I don't think he's going to fold much. Unless he folds his king but calls 7 deuce. So 8-7-5 is definitely a better board for Victor. I think it's more likely he has a set or two pair or like a pair plus draw. Like I'm like 6-7 suited. So at the same time, it's not like the, a terrible board for, uh, for Almaden. If Almaden has a hand like Kings, he can still be somewhat happy about his hand. I mean, a hand like Pocket Fives, for instance, is not really hand Vic a card. It's not really a hand that Victor should have, right? Maybe he has eights or sevens sometimes. And then Victor also doesn't have like six, four, nine, six, probably. He will have uh, eight, seven. He might have seven, five. So Almaden does have a checking range here, which makes sense. Probably want to mix it up here between betting and checking. 
And a victor bet is probably going to be a small bet, which he does employ. Very small bet. I guess his sizing Albadin would have to call with hand like ace king high because he has equity against pairs and he can turn his hand into a bluff sometimes. The three is a very good card for Almond in the C. Let's say he check call hand like aces on the flop as a trap slash pot control slash range protection, whatever you want to call it. This three is sweet, right? Because how does Victor improve on the three? Ace four suited, I guess, now has a double gut shot, but other than that, nothing. And Victor checks behind, so the 10 is definitely not the best card for Almaden. Victor could have protection value about 10s on the flop, and now he checks behind because he doesn't feel like there's value. It's possible he has jack 9. Um, it's possible he has 10 9, which is not a great hand, but it's still a fine one. So let's see what Almaden does. So if Almaden bets here, he's mostly representing like a slow played over pair. And Almaden checks, uh, checks down. He check called ace king on the flop, which is fine, although betting definitely also works sometimes. And Victor called with queen 10. He stabbed the flop, thinking, well, maybe I can get like ace high, king high to fold. I have qu I have queen high. And I have pretty good backdoors, right? Backdoor flush draw, backdoor straight draw. And on the river, he thought, well, if this guy's trapping me, I'm kind of screwed. And I don't really see him calling me with ace high. So let me check behind. So it's conservative, but, uh, but a fine play by Victor. Linus open raises in the cutoff. So it's a little bit different here, right? Because there's four players behind him rather than three. Timothy calls in the small blind. Again, you do can, you can have a small, a small blind calling range. Obviously not a very wide one because there's two people behind you rather than one. If Linus bets, I imagine he bets small. More like third pot, third pot quarter pot. Especially given the fact that they only have half a stack. Okay, I like it. I mean, one way to check, what, I mean, see what, what, like, one way to, to show that Linus has such a fundamentally sound strategy is the fact that, I mean, he's the only guy in this game where every single time he plays, I can kind of predict what he's going to do and which sizing he uses, right? Because he's so fundamentally sound. So if I kind of know what Pyo does in a spot, I know what he's going to do. Whereas with other guys, they're way more out there and, you know, more often I get it wrong. And again, that doesn't mean that his play is perfect, but, uh, you know, it's just very fundamentally sound, just makes very few obvious mistakes. Timothy is not going to have that much of a raising range here. If he's got pocket eights or pocket deuces, he can get the money in. If he's got an ace, it's usually going to be a medium ace, like ace, jack, ace, ten. And so he cannot even get that much value. He also doesn't need, need, really need protection. It's, all, it's also just not that good of a board for him in general, right? Six doesn't really help anybody. I guess Linus turns a couple of draws, you know, five, four suited, whatnot, 10, nine of clubs. Timothy, I don't think calls sixes on the flop with one person behind with two over cards out there. So if Linus bets, he's going to bet pretty large, not a huge, just because the pot's already quite large and they don't have that much of a stack behind. I'm expecting a big bet. Linus is thinking about it. So he bets full pot. Again, it's a big bet, but not a gigantic one. So the pot's going to be 69k, and Timothy is going to have a little bit over pot behind. Timothy, again, is not going to do much raising here, just because his hand is not looking good, right? Unless he has pocket eights, in which case he's going to get the money in on a lot of runouts. And so Linus, he has to decide, let's say I shove my ace-king, am I getting called by hands like ace-queen, ace-jack, ace-ten, maybe ace-five suited enough of the time? Maybe a hand like... No, king eight suited or eight seven suited. I guess eight seven suited actually beats him. So am I getting called by worse enough of the time? And Linus, I mean, as you saw, I mean, he could have ended the hand right away, right? So he, he thought about it for a long time. It was a it was genuinely a tough decision. So he probably thinks that Timothy can have pocket eights and ace eight and ace seven, whatnot. He's not gonna call much worse. So I'm slightly surprised that he didn't shove for, you know, a little bit less than pot. Uh, but but it's not a bad play by any means. <laughs> Just casual three bet to twenty thousand dollars, which is I mean it's ten big blinds, right? It's it's standard, and obviously he would have Victor would have to call Nikita shove because v Nikita would be shoving in less than fifty percent of uh, fifty percent over the top. So Victor can't really fold anything at that point. He'll be pot committed. Jack three four is a pretty safe board for Victor. You know he's gonna have jacks every th time. Threes and fours not really. 
he's gonna have a couple lines like four or five ace three ace four that type of stuff and obviously a lot of pairs and over cards with back door so victor gets to be quite aggressive on a board like this and he doesn't need to go super large on a board like this either so he goes for the small bet timothy i think will have some pocket threes and fours he may have pocket jacks sometimes as well and obviously, he's going to have a lot of hands like pocket sevens, king ten of spades, that type of stuff. Uh, Victor is going to bet very large if he does bet. I mean, protection is so important on a board on a board like this. So let's say you got a hand like queens, right? I mean, you have the best hand very often, but it's a lot of ugly runouts. So you want to get a lot of value here. Check shoving would also be a, a cool play in Victor's spot. I wouldn't even be shocked if Victor just shoved outright. Victor's clearly thinking. I don't think he's Hollywooding here. I mean, it's a very tough spot, right? Wow. That must suck. If you're Victor, you're shoving, right? You're like, ah, oh, can I shove Ace Jack here? Maybe. And True, True Teller snaps him. So maybe True Teller has like Ace Three of Spades or Ace Five of Spades, something like that. Maybe like King Jack of Spades, and he's not folding any of those hands. But other than that, it really looks like he has pocket nines. Maybe Jack Nine. Maybe threes or fours. Oh, <laughs> interesting. Sweet river for Victor, but it wasn't going to matter. Um, so Victor 3 by preflop with 7s, which is absolutely fine. In fact, it's good. He sees best a flop, which is, again, good. I mean, he, his, hand is, his hand needs quite a bit of protection. At the same time, it's quite valuable. On the turn, Victor's probably merge shoving here. So he's probably getting trying to get True Teller to call with a 3 plus a flush draw. Uh, he's trying to get, basically, he's trying to get True Teller to fold a high equity draw, right? Or at least call it off and be in good shape. So Victor's probably thinking, if I shove here, shove here, True Teller will fold eights, he'll fold tens, he'll fold a couple of weak jacks, he'll maybe call a couple of draws that I'm ahead of, and obviously sometimes I'm going to be crushed if he, if he calls with hand like ace, jack, whatever. So yeah, this play is definitely very loose. Uh, I know these guys are friends, and I'm guessing this is some kind of crazy dynamic, because shoving set twice the pot here with seven seems quite ambitious. So yeah, very ambitious play by Victor. And, you know, typical Victor, he gets a seven river, but this time it didn't matter. So, and I mean, in True Teller, right? In True Teller spot, I mean, he called Jack's pre, which is absolutely fine. And, you know, obviously on this flop, why would you fast play Jack's? You've got top set. You're not really worried about anything, but maybe the flush. And now on the turn, you know, still the nuts and somebody over, but shoves on you at 200 KNL. So, yeah, True Teller was probably doing a little bit of a dance, you know, like a, like probably a, a Russian dance. Probably calling his mom saying, yes, I've won $200,000. So True Teller with the perfect play, but then again, it was a very easy play. And Jason again, limps, very good price here. He's not going to do a lot of folding. <laughs> Funny flop. So obviously there's three eights out there. So an eight is very unlikely. So Jason can just bet small here. You know, Almaden is going to have a lot of hands like seven deuce and, you know, 10, five offsuit, stuff like that. So, okay, Jason has a checking range, seems fine. So he's worried about a couple of eights, and he's obviously worried about, you know, some ace highs, maybe some low pocket pairs to check behind. The six is definitely a better card for Almaden. If Jason had in like six, seven, or nine, six, he may stab the flop. If Almaden had just a random six, three suited, right, he would often just check behind. So, but Jason does bet. And when Almaden calls, he's representing a six pretty well, right? So, and he's probably not going to fold the river. It would be cool if Jason just bets like 25k on the river. Just representing a hand like pocket kings. And Jason goes full pod and gets snapped. So, I mean, I don't see how Almaden has anything but a six here. Maybe he has like pocket deuces, but he must have a six. Let's see what Jason has. And they both have a six. Okay. Okay.